Hi, it's Corrine with the Cut at Home design team and today I'm making a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout. I'm using Heidi Swap's Hello Beautiful paper and I'm using a black and white photo which is my favorite to work with especially when you're working with a lot of colors on your scrapbook layout. It's a 5 by 5 black and white photo. I printed out the words just imagine on it and I bought that um, font from the online silhouette store so I'll link that over at Cut at Home's blog and the link for Cut at Home will be in the description box so check that out for all the information. So I'm turning this paper upside down and I love that black striped paper along with the pink flowers um, but I do end up covering up most of those flowers. Here's a Spellbinders Nestabilities die it's called Imperial Square it's a beautiful die and I'm running that through my Sizzix Big Shot on some smooth white cardstock. And I do run it few, excuse me, run it through a few times just because it's a very intricate die. Sometimes when doing that, you also need to use a shim or another piece of paper on top of it just to help it cut all the way through. So I'm taking my time. I know it's sped up here quite a bit, but I am taking my time and releasing that die from or the paper from the die because you want to be careful not to rip your die. And look how beautiful that is. I love that die. So instead of the mat that I cut for it, I'm going to be using that behind my photo. I also have a strip of scrap paper from my mind's eye, Find Your Wings and Fly collection. And this striped paper, I decided I wanted a white border for it. So I'm just eyeballing it and cutting off a little bit off the side and bottom. And now I'm matching up that stripe of or strip of paper, excuse me, to the same width as my black striped paper. And I'm going to take off just a little bit more so the border is more even. I just love that paper there. I hate that I had to cover up, but it was just too busy with all those flowers. So I did cover up most of it. So here's another um, border strip from that same My Mind's Eye collection. I'm gonna cut off this pink strip because I do want to work some pink into this layout. And as you can see, I'm not adhering anything yet. I'm just kind of setting it all up to see what I'm happy with before I start adhering it down. Here's where I have decided I needed to cover up that, that um, busy flower so I took a little bit more off the height of that strip of paper again just eyeballing it and now I'm also going to cut down my photo because I wanted a little more of that die cut to show behind it so my photo probably ends up being about four and three quarters inch square and I think it's so important to scrapbook yourself as well. I was looking through my scrapbooks the other day and I think out of dozens of scrapbook layouts that I have, I'm only in two of them. And I know growing up I have very, I think one or two photos of my mom and that's it. So I, I wanna make sure to start scrapbooking myself as well for my son and my family. So that's why I chose to do this today. Now, as you can see, I'm fussy cutting some of the flowers and I do a lot of it off screen. I only did a few of them. And I'm going to edge them in black soot distress ink using a mini ink blending tool. And on two of these flowers, there's a little bit of white in between them. So I'm going to use my craft knife and cut that out. It was right in between the two flowers on each of those. So now I'm going to adhere down my strips. I'm using some Angel Craft Tape. It's a double-sided, very strong adhesive. And I'm using my matte grid as a guide to try and get it as even as possible. And then once I adhere it down, I'm cutting off the excess that goes over the edge. And again, adding my adhesive to the entire back of that mat. I'm going to adhere down my photo now. And 
And again, I'm just kind of laying out everything before I started hearing it down to make sure I'm happy with the layout. And a lot of times I will take a photo of my layout if there's a, a lot involved. That way I can refer back to it once I'm ready to start adhering it down. I pulled out the DCWV Glitzy Glitter Stack and a penny black die. It's called Envision. It has the word Imagine and Dream. And I'm using some silver glitter paper and the word Dream. Again, running that through my Big Shop machine. I love the font in this die. And she has a few dies, a few words that she offers. So as you can see, this is a, a fairly intricate word and it's just so beautiful. So I'm taking out all the negative pieces that I don't need. And I love the silver on there that I end up using a little more of that silver paper um, as you see here, I'm cutting out a strip using a Fisker scallop punch, and I end up cutting out two of them to add into the design. So being that I'm going to add it to the top left, I move that piece to the right to kind of balance it out somewhat. And now I'm pulling out some of the pattern paper that coordinates and a Spellbinders Petite Labels 1 die. I ran that through my Big Shot and added a piece of lightweight chipboard behind it. And now I'm using a Marianne's Creatables Bow die. This is one of my favorite dies. And again, from the same pattern paper, I edged this in the black soot distress ink just to tie it in. And this is a fairly thin paper, so I'm using my bone folder to break up the fibers and curl it, but you want to be careful when you do that because it is a thin paper. I held it very tightly in the middle of the bow. And now I'm just threading it through my pearl brad. And look how pretty that is. I love the dimension on it. You'll see me use that bow die a lot. So now here is where I decided to go ahead and start adhering everything down. And I'm going to curl up the edges. I just did not want it completely flat. I'm not trying to distress it so much. That's not the look I'm going for. But I just wanted to curl it up a tiny bit. And on this piece, I end up flattening um, the bottom down before adhering that on, just because I didn't want that piece curled up. And now again, adding my tape to place my photo down. And I couldn't really tell if that was straight or not, so I used my T-square ruler, um, which you'll see here in a minute, to make sure that my photo was straight. I'm tucking in those little scallops in behind my photo to the left and to the right. And here's where I'm second guessing if it's straight or not, so I just pulled out my ruler and I can check that weight. And now I'm placing down my flowers, getting them exactly where I want. And once I was happy with that, I just kind of lifted them up, added a little bit of wet glue to hold them in place. And I also wanted a little bit of dimension with the flowers. So you'll see me add some pretty thick pop dots. Pop dots, <laughs> I couldn't say that, behind the flowers just to kind of tuck up those edges or, or tuck under those edges just to give them a little bit of dimension. I was really happy with how that turned out. So I'm using some Scotch Quick Dry and a fine tip bottle and adding down my little word dream into the flower. And I decided I didn't want that strip to be so long, so I cut it off a little bit, and I'm adding that to the top left, again, just to balance the layout and bring in that silver paper up there. And I will adhere down my little labels die and my bow. I pulled out some Recollections pearls and I'm adding some hot glue just to make sure that they stick. I don't have to worry about them coming up. 
I'm adding a few to the top left and the bottom right. And here's a little rhinestone buckle and a grayish blue pearl for the center. I added that to my flower. And lastly, I'm adding some dandelion wood cutouts that I got from Wild Orchid Craft. And that will finish up my project. I hope you stop by Cut at Home's blog. I'll have a list and link for all the products used today. Thanks so much for watching.